You can't see it, but insulation plays a big role in the comfort of your home. Join us today as Kurt Clausen of the Iowa Energy Center. And Kurt, we physically can't see most of the insulation that's in our home, and we generally think of insulating as something that we do in new construction. How important is it in existing homes? It's very important in existing homes. And the main reason is because most existing homes don't have the insulation levels that they need to be at today's standards. Now insulation, there's a lot of options, a lot of choices out there. It, it can be a little bit intimidating. Can you talk us a little bit about the options we have, the choices? Certainly, some of the basic options for insulations are blankets, bats, rolls, this type of insulation. Common, uh, commonly used in walls. Uh, there's blown-in insulation. Uh, cellulose and fiberglass are both used for blown-in. Uh, there's spray foam systems, both a um, low-density uh, open cell and a high-density closed cell. And then there's uh, various types of insulation board materials. Now, as I look at this as a homeowner thinking about insulating for my house, how do I know about the greatest benefit that I'm going to get from this? What do I need to know? Well, what you want to look at is the uh, thermal resistance of the insulation system and where you're going to be putting it. Uh, for instance, again, this is a good insulation to be putting up in your um, attic space and your ceiling. That's an unfaced uh, insulation. Uh, this insulation has a facing in it that would work well in a sidewall. So, Kurt, I'm going to make the insulation choice. How much can I expect to save? Well, if you're uh, looking at an attic and you would uh, increase the insulation level in your attic from, say, 3 inches to the recommended level of 12 to 16 inches, uh, you might be able to save 20% on your heating costs. How do I know if I need to add insulation to my home? Well, one of the symptoms of not having enough insulation is an area that might be a little cold and drafty, and that might be your wall or ceiling insulation that's inadequate. Um, another way to, to do is to take a look, poke your head through that attic hatch, and take a look around that attic. If you can see the top of the attic floor joist, then you know you don't have enough insulation. Now, can I put new insulation on top of old insulation? Because I'm, I'm thinking about my attic there when you mentioned that. Can I come in with the new on top of the old? Certainly. You can that. Um, putting um, new insulation on top of old is done quite frequently, adding insulation. There's a couple of things you want to pay attention to. Uh, the first in an attic is moisture. You want to make sure that there's no moisture in the insulation that's there. If there is, you want to solve the moisture problem first. Uh, the second thing in an attic is you want to let that attic be ventilated. You need to have it breathe so that the moisture that does come in the attic gets, gets taken out through the attic vents. You don't want to plug those up. Now, when we talk about insulation, a lot of folks think and, and know of R value. Explain R value for us. Well, R value is a measure of the thermal resistance. In fact, the R does stand for the resistance. It's the ability of the insulation to resist the flow of heat through it. Uh, the higher the R value, the better. A good way to compare insulation systems is to compare the R value per inch of thickness on insulation. The other thing that we want to look at when we're looking at insulation is this, how the system performs. And we think about that, how much air actually moves to the insulation, how the water moves to the insulation. Um, the insulation system also has to do with the sound and the structural properties of the insulation. Um, one of the, the uh, big items with insulation that we want to recognize is that some insulations can be flammable and can produce some toxic smoke when burned. So we want to make sure we have those covered with a fire rated drywall. So some issues to keep in mind when I'm thinking about my insulation Absolutely. or the type that I'm going to use. Now, Kurt, for our homeowners, it pays to do a little bit of research, right? Exactly. We'd recommend that you do some research. And a good source of information on insulation and home tightening is the uh, Home Tightening Insulation and Ventilation Home Series from the Iowa Energy Center. Uh, that's available from download to the website. It describes the different insulation materials, the advantages and disadvantages of each, and gives you some idea of what insulation levels that you need. The website information here on our screen, but really check it out before you're really set off to uh, get into your insulating project. That's right. Want to avoid making those mistakes, especially when you're doing things like insulating your attic and maybe not paying attention to how the attic's ventilated. How about uh, when I look at, at, at the insulation, is this something that, that I can do, the homeowner can do, or I need to leave it for the professionals? There's certain um, insulation jobs that the homeowner can do. Those types would be attic insulation is a good homeowner pro project. Um, there you can uh, take a look in the attic and see what you need. If you do a little bit of research and investigation first, that always helps. Um, another good area for insulation would be the basement, the basement walls, or you might be putting in a rigid board insulation insulation along your concrete block, or you'd be uh, insulating the band joist or the rim joist, that joist that's just above your basement wall to your first floor. Those are good homeowner projects. The uh, 
types of projects like insulating the wall, we really recommend uh, uh, that you leave that to the professionals. When you you mentioned do your, your homework, a little research, but there's also some uh, benefits and rebates right now for insulation? Certainly. There's some uh, good rebate incentives that are offered by many of the utility companies. Well, it makes a lot of sense, Kurt, for us to look around our home and have an idea where we might be able to add some insulation because it can save energy and save us some dollars from our wallet, right? Exactly. Another good recommendation is to contact your local utility company. Uh, they can do a home energy audit and they'll come out and take a look at uh, where you might need insulation and make some recommendations on where that insulation might be installed. Kurt, a lot of great information. Thanks for being with us and explaining the importance of a well-insulated home. Well, thank you.